Uh, hi, we're here with Matteo Gerovini from uh, Blue Break, uh, the makers of this uh, ABS integrated ABS system for e-bikes, and he's going to talk us through how the system works. Well, the ABS system is basically composed by three different technology. One is a mechanical, one is hydraulic, and one is electronic. So this first part is the speed sensor in the in the front wheel on the brake system with a sensor that read the from the ground, the speed of the bicycle and the surface. Yeah. Then the information goes here to the electronic that is uh, stick on the frame. Yep. This electronic receives the information from the speed sensor but at the same time with accelerometer and gyroscopic, understand the dynamic of the bicycle and send this information to the hydraulic part right. called the actuator. This is the real hub, the real heart of the system. This is a, a hydraulic technology that is linked to the brake. Yep. So basically the information they receive is that what kind of surface, what kind of speed the bicycle is, uh, is having right now. Mm -hmm. And based on that, the system decides how strong you can brake the lever in the, right. in the front wheel. So it opens or closes the valve in... The exactly. They calculate the, the pressure on the oil yep. of the brake is calculated based on the information they receive uh, and the electronic transform. Right. Very, very quickly. Very quickly. So, well, I would say continuously right. during the day, during every second they receive. So when you change, for example, from a, a surface to a wet surface, from a, yeah. a standard surface like a pave, from a, every second the system understands what is the surface. So if we break between one surface and the other one, the system modulates the brake based yeah. on what kind of surface in that pre uh, precise moment yeah. is riding yeah, the bike. Yeah. And so yeah. presumably the, um, this management system for the, for the ABS uh, opens up potential for integration with other systems. concept is that uh, one system, one electronic system can drive several uh, different mechanisms in the bike and right. of course this, this uh, electronic part is related to the ABS but yep. uh, the more you go into the market, the more you go into the future with the e-bike, the more connection you should have uh, yep. and of course now you have the engine, you have the battery, then you're going to have in the future the light, then you're going to have the, the entity system. All these systems should probably talk with one central system. Yep. And right now we are creating this system that has a very high level of uh, technology that potentially is the most developed system that is on the e-bike right now. And you want to have a system then that talks to all the systems and to any other system and is not limited to one particular type of uh, yeah. manufacturer? Yeah, we are an open system basically. So our, uh, um, our ABS can be linked to any kind of battery, any yeah. kind of brand, any kind of engine and potentially any kind of brake. So we, we basically, technically speaking, our system is like an Android system. It's an open system. Yeah. So we want to try to be open to everybody compared with other systems that are in the market. They of course, lock the ABS or uh, other technology. And our goal is to become like the open source for potential future development of an e-bike. I guess that what you would like is to have, or you think the future is, one system that manages the ABS and manages the battery. Well, yeah. what's happening in the last, uh, you know, the company's brand new, I would say. Yeah. It's a young company. We just uh, be on the market uh, in uh, officially started from Eurobike two months ago. Right. But in the last six months, uh, uh, we have a lot of discussion about people that's producing the brain, the actual brain in the system of the yeah. battery, for example. So we are trying to understand where the future is going and we want to be part of that. But, uh, you know, uh, the, the direction of the e-bike is going in the same direction of the cars. Right. Now, if when you, when you turn on your car, your car says uh, there's a problem, the engine is broken, whatever, there's a problem. So the electronic is driving the car and the motorbike. In the future, that's going to happen in the e-bike. Right. So we want to be part of that development because we know that we have either the, the knowledge and the technology to be part of that. Okay, so what you're saying is that you see a, a not very distant future probably where you get on your e-bike, you switch it on, it does a systems check and it says, oh yeah, your brakes need a service uh, or you know, there's a fault, your tyre pressure is a bit low, something like that, just like you would in a car. Yeah, exactly. What potential is already here. Yeah. Potentially, our system is a storage is a, is a storage of all this information. So at the end of a ride, I can download this information and they can tell me how many breaks have the, I have done, how for how long, for how long, what time, what distance. So I can potentially have all this information. That means what is the consumption of my disk? What is the consumption of my chain? When do I need to go to maintenance? So we already have this information. How we can use it? 
is the big challenge and is the yeah. big uh, because right now like for the ABS the ABS is something and you try it yeah. when you try you say wow that's something that I need it yeah. but then slowly the market should understand that and yeah. in the car business in the motorbike industry it takes years yeah. e-bike yeah. e is going much faster because of the experience of the car yeah. and the motorbike yeah. so we see that in a few years probably that's gonna be I don't say compulsory but potentially can be like that in the future so the, the brain of the ABS right now is the most sophisticated brain that is on the bicycle. And I think that uh, we, we can drive part of this development with our technology in the future. Okay, and, and you were saying it's, it's harvesting, you're already harvesting loads of data from the bike. Yeah. So you're, you're also, I mean, looking at it from a completely different type of cyclist perspective, you're actually also harnessing then the sort of power data that the cyclist is. So you could use this, but you could use something like this to train on. Well, you can either be a sophisticated cyclist that can say, I want to know my, how my ride was, how many curve, what is my dynamic, how fast I was in the curve. I can have all this information as yeah. a sophisticated. But as a normal rider that says, I don't want to know anything, just on, off. So when you turn on, I can yeah. tell you it's time to go to the maintenance. Yeah. Or also you can sell your bike yeah. on a better price because we can guarantee the usage of this bike along years and years. Yeah. Yeah. And as you yeah. said, as I said, it's probably too early. I mean, mm. it's too early because the market is not ready. Yeah. But uh, we are going in a direction that uh, five years, ten years, probably and, less. And, and I suppose equally, re this technology and these bikes or where it's going is aimed at people who currently aren't cyclists. Well, well commuting. Commuting is the, the yeah. commuting is the real future for this yeah. kind of bicycle. And uh, not only for this kind of bicycle, the commuting, the, the, the commute is, is changing worldwide, of yeah. course. But in the future, if you want to buy a car on an electric bike, it's not like 10 years ago, the difference was a car and a bicycle was like an ocean between the yeah. two. Now, yeah. if you can buy an e-bike in a city like Milan or also London or a big city, you can potentially go faster than a, a car. So oh, why yeah. not? Well, yeah. yeah, it's a transportation. I mean, of yeah. course, if you want to ride uh, uh, like, uh, you know, on the mountain, you can go it. I mean, it's two different worlds, I would say, but yeah. especially in the mountain bike now, everything is becoming e-bike because uh, you can have more kilometers, you can do more miles, you can have more fun, but yeah. at the same time you have to ride. I mean, this is not a motorbike, it's a bicycle. Yeah. So you have to ride anyway. You have to push your pedal anyway. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is the ABS on one of the bikes that currently runs the system, what part of the frame does it go in? Does it go in the seat tube or is it in the top tube or? Well, it depends. In Bull's bicycle is, is exactly like this. Right. In the crashing bicycle, that is one big tube, one unique tube oh, is a, a female. That's a In this part. Uh, and uh, so in the future, of course, we are dealing with companies that say we want to build a special frame for, to accommodate this right. because that makes a lot of sense to have it inside. Somebody want to have it outside. I mean, the, the market is going so fast in the last yeah. months that uh, yeah. Everything is going to happen in the in the future. Uh, my feeling is that in the future there's going to be something that's going to be embedded. Think about what's happening in the uh, in the road bike when yeah. Shimano launched uh, in Campagnolo the first uh, yeah. electronic system. The battery yeah. was down the bottom bracket. It was yeah. something yeah. that you, if you see a bicycle right now, say, what the hell is that? Yeah, 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 <laughs> but it takes yeah, yeah. years. Then the battery goes into the, the down tube. So I think that in the future, it gets smaller and smaller. smaller and smaller and smaller. That's what's happening in our system in the future. So uh, one other thing people are uh, definitely going to be interested in is the subject of maintenance. So obviously it's designed as a, a, a low maintenance, maintenance free system, but things go wrong, th things do need replacing. What happens when you bring in, how, how have you designed this for bring, taking it to your local bike shop? No, we have a very clear, uh, I would say, after sale market situation. So we develop a system where the shop uh, is becoming is the is the main hub for selling this bicycle of course yeah. so we want the shop can be can have a assist a very easy maintainer so when something happened they can replace any pieces and they can be immediately replaced with a new one so the maintenance is uh, is uh, the pieces are very simple it's sophisticated right. inside it's modular. So you just, just modular you can take one pieces and change it uh, and that's it so we don't they don't have to build anything right. the bicycle arrived already built by the oem yeah. so they just have to take care of if something happened the final consumer send it and they can replace it immediately. So we build a system that uh, is sophisticated but it's simple to maintain. That's the and do you, does it come with any sort of warranty or, does it, or is that covered by no the warranty. manufacturer, the, the bicycle manufacturer? We have our, our, uh, our own warranty for sure, but at the same time we deal with the manufacturer because uh, when something is get broken on a Bulls bicycle, a problem, a Bulls bicycle, uh, people go to the dealer to yeah. talk about the Bulls bicycle. So of course we have a, um, a relation with the OEM, but yeah. we will uh, we'll be the one that take care of all the Right, systems. Right, right, right. The warranty is, uh, is based on the fact that we know that this system is, uh, is very trustable, it's very yeah. strong uh, and of course uh, we are new in the market so the, your question is uh, something yeah, that yeah, everybody's yeah. putting but it, the question is that it's a sophisticated system but is uh, very easy to right. maintain. That's the right. real concept. Right, right. So if you enjoyed this video 
don't forget to like and subscribe below. Thanks a lot. Until next time.